Hi, I'm your host Sopan Bhatia and welcome to Open for Business with Blair Lion. COVID-19 has really disrupted our lives, but it has not brought the world to a standstill. While we are locked inside our houses, we still need resources to be functional and also run our businesses. Like any other crisis, this pandemic has created an opportunity for new businesses. And I have talked to some businesses, they just started, uh, uh, and those businesses did not exist before because they see some, some problems that they thought they could solve. And I talked to them and they said, yes, this is unfortunate time, but it also is a time when people need help. But starting a new company in these troubling times has its own set of challenges. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about some of these challenges and how you can successfully start your business during the pandemic. Blair, is it really a good time to start a new company? This is the number one question I get from entrepreneurs. And launching a startup is always gonna be a challenge, but there can be real advantages to opening a business during an economic downturn like what we're experiencing now. For example, I mean, we all know the email service provider MailChimp, right? I mean, they launched in 2001, right when the dot-com bubble burst. And they now have a valuation of, I think, like over $4 billion and revenues of over $700 million. Or uh, Warby Parker, the eyeglass company, founded back in 2010 by Neil Blumenthal and his partners during one of the worst economic recessions in history. Today, the company is worth like $1.7 billion. Other examples from that kind of 2007, 2009 time period, like uh, Uber, Square, Venmo, Airbnb, and others. I mean, it's, they all were successful starting their business in a down economy. Now, when I first started my company back in 99, tech companies were on fire. It seemed like there was a big announcement almost every week of companies selling for millions or going IPO. I went through like the normal process of starting my company, bootstrapping it for the first year, uh, raising friends and family uh, the following. Then in early 01, hey, found myself with a legit company with revenues and some name brand customers. But by this time, several VC firms were courting us and we ended up closing a $50 million round at a 45 million valuation. You know, things were good until the economy fell off a cliff when the dot-com bubble finally burst. It seemed like overnight, our customers paused their projects and the world was turned upside down. Now, you know, we were lucky to close on our funding when we did, but we faced a tough road ahead in a market that suddenly stopped buying. My company was a marketing tech business, and when, and when a recession hits, kind of the first and easiest thing to cut, of course, is advertising spending. So over the next year, we had plenty of hardships, but we also benefited from some of the opportunities that can arise during an economic downturn. So I wanted to share a couple of them with you. So first, when times are tough, customer needs and like ROI, return on investment, really rule. For us, customers had less to spend, but what that meant was that what little money they had had to go further and drive better results. So we had to really switch our whole messaging. So we quickly realized that our kind of cool product demo and our flashy marketing technology, we weren't getting any meetings anymore with that pitch. We had to change our messaging and approach to one that focused on performance marketing and demonstrating higher returns than the other traditional tactics they were using. The result was prospects responded and we started to grow again. So that was a really good one. Um, another, another one is that, you know, the reason why now might be a good time is when money is more scarce, you end up kind of focusing and learning faster, uh, no matter if you're just raising your first round or like in an early growth phase, scarcity of money can really help you laser in on what matters and how to build a solution that customers actually want to buy. Now, another key benefit can be less competition. The bigger companies aren't as quick to build out that new product that competes with your idea, and the other entrepreneurs may be hesitant to jump into a market that's under stress. I saw this really firsthand with my business when the pace of new competitive offerings went from what seemed like 
God, it seemed like one every month, to like nothing. Another thing that was interesting when I was preparing for this call swap was I talked to a friend of mine who's in the investment community, and he reminded me of another really cool benefit that you get during these downtimes. And his comment was, a recession leads to less noise and more signal. Now, what he meant by that is getting actionable insights on, let's say, product market fit or customer experience or competitive differentiation, you know, and so on, is hard <laughs> and even harder in a noisy, crowded market. During a recession, it can be much easier to kind of see and validate those signals from the customers about your offering that will allow you to more effectively solve customer needs and build a more successful business. Uh, and let's see, I would say finally, if you can grow during a recession, then you're on fire in a good economy. Just goes back to what I said earlier that in these downtimes, can really help you focus, learn faster, zero in on customer needs, pick up on those cues from the market that can help you win. And yeah, it may be like a lot harder in certain ways, but it can also be easier uh, for you to pivot and tune your business when you are small and growing. If you wait when you're big and slow, it could be really hard for you to adapt to the market to be successful. It's tough time. So there are, you know, unique set of challenges. I mean, of course, there are opportunities, but unique set of challenges because, as you rightly mentioned, you know, companies will be cutting their, their, their advertising budget and other companies may be looking at, you know, uh, going a bit thin, there may be layoffs. So what are the some, some kind of challenges which are unique to this crisis which entrepreneurs face? I mean, it's not that we have seen crisis every now and then, you know, there was the last recession and now we are most probably uh, going into the next one. But what are the, you have been through one, as you mentioned. So what are some unique challenges that companies face and how they should weather them? Well, I mean, on the bad news is that a lot of things will be harder. Uh, now, but the opposite, the good news is that with every negative, there's also a positive opportunity. So let me talk about a couple of these. So first, you know, starting your business in a recession will typically result in you starting smaller and staying a smaller business longer. But the benefit, as we touched on earlier, is that it also creates more discipline, more focus, which means that your business is going to end up being stronger. So when times are good, you will grow that much faster and be more resistant to competition or other marketing market challenges. Now, sales could be harder. Uh, yeah, I mean, that could be true, like I experienced. But it can also be easier. When times are good, your prospects really uh, won't have any reason to change. It's that whole kind of why change, why now, why your product message. So why should they change? Things are good. They are making money. Adopting your solution means work and risk for them. So often it can be easy to get happy meetings or someone to try or demo your product, but actually really difficult to get them to adopt it. When recession hits, prospects are now motivated to find new solutions that deliver better results for less. Often jobs are at stake and big money is at risk. So you really have to pay attention to that. Um, also, Marketing is often more difficult, but alternatively, uh, advertising costs could be a lot more affordable. So that's a potential benefit. And another one you ought to watch out for is that if your product or service is kind of a luxury item or nice to have, it's going to be more difficult for sure in a recession. But like it was for me, if you can switch your messaging to more of an ROI based message, it can actually be much easier to get meetings and to get companies to adopt your offering. Now, starting funding conversations is always difficult, but I think during a recession, it's especially difficult to kind of kickstart those initial conversations. But once you're in, it can actually be easier or faster to close a deal. So recessions tend uh, to slow the pace of new startups, which means less competition and a surplus of investment capital that needs to be spent. So if you can kind of get into a slot with a pot potential investor or two, you'll find sometimes that closing your, your, your deal will actually go faster. Uh, another one is uh, you will raise uh, lower amounts of 
investment capital at lower valuations, which isn't great. Uh, the good news, though, is that overall costs could actually be lower. Uh, recessions means better access to talent at lower rates, uh, cheaper advertising, better negotiating power, and so on. So you may not need as much capital as your business plan initially forecasted. Uh, and then also, you really need to be able to always demonstrate revenue. And if you can do that in a down uh, market, then you, your business will be that much stronger when times are good. So that's another thing to kind of keep, keep an eye out for. If you can really demonstrate revenue, then go for it. I mean, I don't see any reason why you should potentially wait. If you can successfully start and run a business in tough time, of course, you will have a much more smoother sale uh, in, you know, when, the, when everything is calm around it. But just, just for you know, a lot of companies that I've seen, are they like putting a pause on their you know, expenditure and all those things? But is it like you know, when you can see market forecast and you see, oh, it's based on this you know, crisis, which will be over uh, soon. We might have a vaccine and the economy will start to open up. Uh, does it like kind of make sense? that, hey, no, why? Just let's wait. I think we've already kind of outlined that there's a lot of companies that have been, been very successful not waiting. Uh, and I think there's some real advantages to going for it. But I think there are a couple of points that you should pay attention to, right? So um, if you're a luxury offering, like I mentioned before, then yeah, maybe you should wait. Uh, or if you want to maximize your valuation, you want to get the most money for the least amount of equity, yeah, you might get better uh, deal terms in a growing or up economy. Uh, or if you think your window of opportunity is really long, like you're not in a rush, then you know drop into the market when it's convenient for you. Uh, or if you're shooting for the moon <laughs> and revenue is a long way out, uh, then yeah, you, you might wanna wait a little bit because you might wanna maximize kind of the amount of capital that you can raise at the lowest possible valuations, because you know it's gonna be a long time. You're gonna to have to raise multiple rounds potentially. So if, if you need maximum capital uh, and revenue is a long way out, then yeah, and, and you might wanna wait. Yeah, it's not a good time to start a hotel uh, uh, restaurant business for sure. <laughs> uh, so, uh... Okay, let's say that you are willing to pull the you know, trigger and you're like, Yo, I want to go ahead, I want to move forward and start a company uh, in these times. Are there any kind of precautionary measures that they should take so, so as to ensure that they are lowering the risks, as you said, you know, to maximize their you know, profit before they actually start the, the company? I think it's really doing your due diligence on the investor. So check the performance of the other companies in the investor's portfolio. Like what stage are they at, their success rate, have they had any big exits? This will really tell you how uh, aggressive they will be or how desperate they are or uh, how comfortable they will be in kind of looking at the long term. So really look at those and try and find the right uh, partner uh, for your business by really investigating that, that uh, say venture capital or angel, angel round investor. And then also, just keep in mind what we talked about that, you know, focus on, focus your offering on what people need. Uh, because if you're a needs-based solution or a solving a core problem, you'll thrive when markets are low and you'll thrive when markets are high. Uh, so that's kind of the always fundamental, you know, guidelines we always get by entrepreneurs. Awesome. Thank you, Blair. That was some good piece of advice. And, and uh, after listening to what you said, I, I think there is no right or wrong time for starting a company. If you think you're ready, if you see a market there, that's the right time. Uh, so once again, thanks for talking to me. I hope, I think that next time you're taking a vacation, so we will be missing our show next week, but we will see you after that week. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Swap.